I said press too quickly. All right, so there's basically five different patterns that we see in resonance. There's the uh, allylic lone pair. And when you have an allylic lone pair, that is really just a lone pair next to a double bond. Remember we talked about there's alternate types of resonance structures, like you could pull this off and put a pair here and there'd be a positive charge. We don't tend to do that because it makes an atom that doesn't have an octet. So typically when we do an allylic, allylic lone pair, we push two sets of electrons at the same time. And that's to avoid having this carbon be a carbocation next to this oxygen, which would be negatively charged. Um, you can also have an allylic positive charge. Now remember that positive charge, that's an open p orbital. Right? So what ends up happening is the electrons shift. Let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. I think I can do this. Hmm. Oh, I see. Never mind. All right, let's try this. First of all, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, make a little <laughs> really scary clown smiley face. Okay, so I can take this pair of electrons, and when I move it, right over here, there's actually an open p orbital. That's what allows the electrons to go to that position. It's electron, this carbon that's at this end is electron deficient, okay? You can also do the same thing with a pair of electrons on a low pair to come in and bond <coughs> to this carbon. So if you think about what's on this carbon, Oops, there's a hydrogen, right? It's missing a pair of electrons. So it's very unstable because it doesn't satisfy the octet rule. It turns out the octet rule is a big overriding factor for these kinds of molecules. So since it doesn't have its octet, it's actually more stable for this, electron, this pair of electrons on the oxygen to come over and reside in that orbital and stabilize the molecule. So the resonance structure for this one just ends up being looking like this. And where's the positive charge? The It'll be on the oxygen. And I'm going to push this thing back. Hang on. It'll be really loud. <laughs> I don't realize it's in the way until I find myself doing this. I think it's kind of cool to walk like a crab, but you know it's not like the best thing. All right, now, um, here you can pull a pair of electrons up here. It's not as good of a resonance structure, though, because what do you leave when you do that? You have a positive carbocation here and a negative charge next to it. Sometimes we have to do that to show a mechanism. We'll talk about that. And a lot of times we'll end up with closed rings. And then rather than moving the electron pair to an atom, right, we, we move them all at the same time. So for that one, the resonance structure ends up looking like what? If I draw the... Yeah, it just looks like everything rotated over. Like that. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm finally getting the hang of this. By the way, if I like this one, I will post it later like right after class. It'll go to my uh, YouTube channel. Don't ask me what the name of my YouTube channel is. I've posted things there before. Some of my st former students know where it is. All right, All right so what, what's going to happen here? What are the possible resonance contributors for this molecule? Which, by the way, is really messed up, but go ahead. What's that? Yeah, the nitrogen here can donate a pair here. <coughs> Because this, remember, this has just the hydrogen in the open p orbital. That's why it's got the positive charge. So I can take this pair and go like this. And what are you going to see in that position now? Double bond. Double bond. So you'll end up with this. And then, yeah, the positive charge on the nitrogen. What other places can you have resonance? Right. Oxygen here, lone pairs. Right. This is an allylic. 
right? So lone pair, this can come in. Now, if I just bring this in, what's screwed up about that? Carbon has Carbon's got too many bonds. So again, I can push these, and then these will have to go back to here. Right, this can't go over here. Why can't this go over here? Same reason, because now all of a sudden, even though it doesn't show it, right, there would be five bonds on this bottom carbon. It's possible that you could do what? Which I, I kind of think is better, but that's okay. We haven't covered this yet. If I'm going to push this, if I'm going to push this, I've got to be able to, there's a pointer in here somewhere. I have not figured oh, it out. Yeah, see here? If I push those and push these, Right? I could also take this and push it over to here. So that is a resonance contributor for that molecule. So pushing these two, rather than putting the electrons here, right, where would they be happier? They would be happier up here, canceling out this positive charge. Does that make sense? So then what you end up with draw it over on the side, is, I'm not going to draw the, I'm not going to draw the whole thing, but you end up with this oxygen that looks like this, single bond here, right. this is going to branch, and double bond going up here, like that, that's what that becomes. Or you can bring this down in here as well. Now, I've got a lone pair here. Can I do anything with this lone pair? I could make a resonance contributor. It's not a good one. I'm just going to say I could make a resonance contributor on that molecule by pulling this pair of electrons like that. What's bad about that? Yeah, I have a, I have a charge here and a charge here, so it's unstable, right? Can this electron move anywhere? Can it, can it? Well, actually, it can actually, it could possibly come across here and form a bridge, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> That's a possibility. There's a lot of things that could potentially happen. Okay. All right, let's go to the next slide. Well, I'm going to try, well. Okay. Um, uh, oh, by the way, um, his analogy on the peach is and the nectarine is wrong. You guys know that? Like, they always say, oh, a nectarine is a cross between a peach and a plum. All right? turns out a nectarine is a, not a cross. It's a mutant. No, it just doesn't have any hair. This is like people, right? Some people have hair. Some people don't have hair. All right, so anyways. Um, so I think I'm going to be done with that chapter because I think that's the last of the... We've talked about contributor stability as we've gone along, so I'm going to skip some of that. Um, when is the homework due? Then? This week. That's just the way I do it. It's due. When I finish a chapter, it's due that way. Okay, so uh, just a couple of things I wanted to point out. Um, delocalize, we talk about delocalization. Delocalizations are the electrons that we draw in resonance structures, and it's our way of describing or correlating to molecular orbital theory. Okay? Localized electrons are not in resonance. So what kind of electrons are localized? What do we even talk about localized? Because that's a term that you'll hear periodically. Electrons that can't move in resonance structures, sigma bonds. Sigma bonds usually cannot move in a resonance structure. There's a few instances where you can create sigma bonds, but that's not resonance. That's a different structure, okay? So, but we will have mechanisms where you do move some localized electrons to form new structures. Also, when I say delocalized electrons, what kind of electrons can be delocalized? Lone pairs, right? Pi bonds. Maybe it's going to work, maybe it's not. All right, let's see if I can get this thing to move. Oh, good. So, now, second thing. So, you look at the atom. Second thing is resonance, okay? 
Ethanol versus acetic acid. Ethanol is pKa, we said it's about 10 to the 15th, right? Or it's pKa is about 10. Oh, sorry, 15. Acetic acid, pKa is about 4.75. So this is definitely a stronger acid. But you notice, if we're going to do a comparison, like the REO comparison, Adam's the same. Right? But this is 10 times, 10 orders of magnitude stronger than that as an acid. It's like 10 to the 10th. That's more money than I have. I'm going to guess it's more money than any of us have altogether. <laughs> Why is it so much stronger? It has a resonance structure, so it could delocalize the electrons. Okay, so since my, my dude is not connecting, nice. I'm connected again. So if I were to draw the resonance structure, well, like this. Remember, look at the anion. The anion looks like this. What can it do? It can take this pair of electrons and delocalize it like this. So then its resonance structure, the one that it's going to make, looks like this. And these are the resonance structures. And then go back and forth. Why does that make it more stable? Because remember, like, why is it a stronger acid? The answer is because it's more stable. Why does that make it more stable? It can spread this charge density out. As soon as you could spread the charge density out, you're more stable. So resonance allows the spreading out of charge density, allows the molecule to be more stable. Induction. Okay, so electronegativity is important for the atom that you're bonded to, but it's also important for the atoms bonded away from the actual acid group. So you notice I got these electronegative groups that are over here. Well, I don't have them here. What do I have here? I have hydrogens, right? Mm -hmm. Three hydrogens, all replaced with chlorines. So think about the resonance structure for this, for its anion. The anion, I would lose the H, right? A base would come in, pop the H off. I'll end up with this. Well, okay, I won't end up with that because I just pushed the wrong button. I'll end up with this. Now, remember, I haven't drawn the chlorines in here. I'll draw those in a second. Um, negative charge then spreads to these two oxygens, right? How do you make a negative more stable? You give it a positive. How do you make it again, right? What, is, what opposites attract, right? So if I could make this more positively charged, somehow, again, High charge density is unstable. Resonance lowers the charge density. If I want to lower the charge density some more, I have to introduce some positive charge. So the chlorines are all electronegative. There's this inductive effect. These are pulling like this, which ends up pulling like that. And you end up getting a partial positive charge here. And that partial positive charge helps to stabilize this negative charge through induction. It's a through bond effect. Is that Cl3C? That's Cl3C. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Because I didn't want to write CCl3 because yeah. it's so small already. So the inductive effect, anytime you put in a group on that's more electronegative, Away from the acidic hydrogen, it causes the acid to be stronger because it pulls electron density away from this, essentially neutralizes the electron density from the, from the anion. Okay. So inductive effect also, if you think about acetic acid, and versus ethanol, which I showed before. Inductive effect is also important here. Why? Because this oxygen, right, helps to pull electron density away from here, causes this to be a little bit more positively charged. 
spreads out that charge density. So induction is also important in acetic acid, in addition to resonance. Okay, let's, let's do a, let's go through our, um, we haven't done orbital yet, so really we're just going to go R-E. Okay. So pairs of acid, got these two on the left. Briefly explain why the acid, which acid, the, well, briefly explain the stra acid strengths. And let's just do like this. And then we're going to go do the whole thing, but rather than try to do everything at once. I'm going to do the pairs on the left, and we'll talk about the pairs on the right. But it's the same reasoning. Okay, so remember, four things you're going to always do. You're going to look at A. A matter? Atom. Does the atom matter in the acid strength here? No, because the H is always bonded to an O. So there's a on that one. Okay. R. What's R? Resonance, right? R matter here? When you're comparing acid strengths? Same resonance. Same resonance. Okay, sorry. I. Induction. Yes, important. Two, two things. In this case, if I was comparing uh, like to ethanol, then I'd have to include this oxygen. Just because I'm comparing these two... I only have to say Cl is present, right? Trying to make this so I can write on it without uh, Cl moves electron density from the oxygen. Not the oxygen, actually, I meant to do from the carbon. And that stabilizes the negative charge in resonance. Because now you have this positive charge stabilizing this negative charge. Now, can you explain why going across the line from here to here, why is this one a stronger acid? More induction. More induction that's the only thing. <laughs> and you go this way, even more induction, right? So you can could, you could explain the whole thing just by looking at these two. It's a trend. Once you know this, then you can just say, well, this one's got more inductive effect, more inductive effect. Okay. So the last one to talk about in this sequence is orbital. I should just barely get it done. I've already mentioned this, actually. Remember, this is sp3, sp2, sp. Which one holds the electron density closest to the nucleus? SP, SP, because it's shorter, right? So these act as if they were more electronegative sp's than sp3's. And as a result, when you have a hydrogen bonded to an sp hybridized carbon, it's more acidic than if it's bonded to an sp3 hybridized carbon. Okay, so if you look at the pKa's, not that you would ever use this as an acid, but ethane pKa is 50. 10 to the minus 50 for the Ka value, right? Ka, pKa 44, pKa 25. Turns out if you use an amide, that's that NH2 minus space that I showed you before, it can pull this hydrogen off. It's a strong enough base that it can remove the hydrogen off of an acetylene. And it's one of the real common tools that we use in organic chemistry to put a negative charge here. So what we do, actually, is something like this. Oops, get back here. I don't know, I like graph paper. So we're going to take an acetylene I'm going to draw the hydrogens on it just because it's helpful and an amide and the amide you just buy as a, a salt, a sodium amide 
this can grab that off. That bond has to break. And then what you end up with is this. I'm going to draw the C here because I've got to put a lone pair on him. Minus. Plus NH3. This is often done in liquid ammonia. Now, ammonia is not a liquid at room temperature, so we have to get it really cold, but it's done in liquid ammonia. And we're not going to do it here because liquid ammonia is really poisonous. And when he catches on fire, it's really explosive. <laughs> you guys remember that, um, where it was, just a little while ago, they had videos of it, a kid in the truck and his dad, and they were watching this big chemical fire at a plant, and it just went kaboom, and it exploded, and then they're like screaming, get out, get out. You guys remember that video? That was an ammonia fire. So the ammonia was burning. Ammonia by itself really isn't that dangerous. And then they hit it with water, and apparently it triggered some reaction that everybody who after the fact said, oh, yeah, you probably shouldn't use water on that. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're so smart, we figured that out after all these people died. Sorry. That's rude. I shouldn't have said that. But it's true, right? Like, yeah. But they actually, they're rewriting like, how they handle ammonia fires now because of that particular incident. Progress. So progress. So next time. Yeah. So, <laughs> next time. so I just wanted to point out this is a really handy nucleophile. What is a nucleophile? Something that likes nuclei, right? So it likes to form bonds to other atoms. So it's very handy for that, and typically we use it for forming bonds between carbon and carbon atoms, and it forms sigma bonds when it does it. Okay. Just telling you. So there's a lot of cool things that we can do with that. So the shorter orbital, stronger acid. For shorter orbital, stronger acid. Ju uh, it's mostly because it pulls the electron density close to the carbon. Acts like it's more electronegative. Okay, so I'm going to use a strong base. And there are strong bases for stuff like this, but I'm going to use a strong base to try to pull a hydrogen off of here. Where is the most acidic hydrogen on the structure? This one? Is it kind of a trick question? You've got to remember, it's a line drawing. What is this? It's a carbon. So that is actually, aha, uh -huh, Yeah, it is. This guy hiding over here. That's the one that's most acidic. All the others, not acidic, right? SP, even though this is an SP hybridization, because it's got a carbon on this side and carbon on that, there's no hydrogens on it. Okay? So that's not going to be reactive. Uh. Oh. Um, yeah, so could the molecule above act as a base in the presence of a strong acid? Now, we have to think about this a little bit. If, if we talk about acid-base theory as proton acceptor and a proton donor, can this thing accept a hydrogen? And the answer turns out to be yes, because if you take a hydrogen and you put it over here, like on an HCl, and you don't have it in water. Well, you could do this in water, actually, this particular one. You can do that, and you can form a bond between a hydrogen, and it turns out this carbon here, and then there'll be a positive charge left over here. So yes, the answer is it could be act as a base in the presence of a strong acid. Um, Yeah, so these were listed in order of importance. Atom, uh, resonance, although sometimes resonance trump. But if you'll notice, here's atom. And when this leaves, I have resonance, right? Which one's a stronger acid? This one is, right? So the atom is more important than resonance. Induction falls below resonance usually, and then the type of orbital is a 
fourth consideration. So most important generally to least important factors. But again, when I ask you to compare two acids in terms of their strength, or tell me which acid is stronger than another acid, that always gets a little dicey because I gave you two acids. You don't have numbers, so you don't really know which one's stronger. So what you go through is you go through this whole REO thing, look at the atom, look at the size, look at the electronegativity, look for resonance, look for inductive effect, and then last thing is you'll look for the type of orbital, okay? And then you describe all those things, and if it's a toss-up, then you say, this is a toss-up, but I'm going to guess this one. But I'm not looking for the this one, I'm looking for the A, R, I, and O explanations, okay? Reality is, like I always tell people, if your life depends on it, look it up. Unless it's a snap decision, somebody's holding a gun to you, it says, which acid's stronger? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen, most likely. Yeah. Next Thursday, yes. Good. And then I'll finish this chapter next time we get together. Yay, we're done.